Hello people, today I'm going to be doing a comparison of what the Balfang can do as a scanner compared to a traditional type scanner. Uh, this is not going to be a tutorial of how to use either as a scanner. I have on my channel a tutorial about the Balfang scan settings and I'm going to be making some for the Radio Shack Pro series in the future, but I haven't done that yet. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see them. And I'm going to be using this as a chance to showcase my graphic design skills. Okay, so one thing you want to remember is that the Baofeng is a ham radio first and a scanner second, and thirdly, it's a flashlight. The scanner is a scanner, and that's its sole purpose, and it has a lot more capabilities. The price difference, one of these is going, to, is going to run you $25 to $50, so they're pretty cheap. And these, a cheaper one will be about $50, and then you go up into the hundreds of dollars for them. And the more you pay, you're getting a lot more capabilities. As a scanner, these have very limited capabilities and some setbacks. There's some ways around them, but uh, there's some features in there that are just kind of a real pain. And... Um, some that, that it actually can prevent you from being able to effectively use it as a scanner at all. A scanner scanner is going to have a thousand or thousands of channels. This particular one I think has a thousand, you can program into a thousand frequencies and then it has a large number of uh, banks already. Whereas these, you have a total of 128 channels that you can program into them. On the scanner, the settings are field programmable. And on these, the settings for scanning are almost entirely chirp only or software only. And that can be a real limitation. One, uh, one, one major problem is channel lockout. This has a button specifically for locking out a channel. If you're getting electrical interference or if there's a lot of traffic on a certain frequency that you're trying to scan through, um, it'll just stop there if you're using a Baofeng and then it's just going to stop every cycle so that's going to be a problem on there on the on the scanner you can just lock it out and that's the problem solved the scan rate on the Baofeng is really slow it's between three and four channels per second and if you're scanning all 128 frequencies that's about 40 seconds to scan through the whole thing, so you're obviously going to be missing a lot. With the scanner, I don't know the actual rate, but it's very fast. I'll say that's, uh, I don't know, 50, 50 channels a second maybe. That's, kind of, that's, that's just a guess, but it's really fast. These are slow as hell, and if you're, especially if you're doing it in uh, VFO mode, it, it just kind of sucks. In the software, such as Chirp, you do have the capability of selecting what channels you want to scan on in the Baofeng. So if you have 128 but you don't want to be scanning through 128, then you can just set what channels you want to, to scan on. And you can do task-specific ones. I have a number of different chirp files for different things that I'm going to be using it for, for amateur radio, for public safety monitoring. One with the, I have all the GMRS and MERS and all those frequencies that you can't legally transmit on, but for emergency use, because I drive across the state twice a week. And I have all the repeaters along the way programmed in as well to receive uh, on, on the scan because I'm going to be able to get a hold of whatever's out there. You can set the scan range in Chirp as well, but you can only set it with the, with software. If you only want to get from, you know, 430 to 470 megahertz, you can set it at that, but you can't change it. And it can only go up by the step that it is set to. So if you're going up by 5 kilohertz, it's going to take a long time for you to scan anywhere. And uh, yeah, it's VFO scanning on a Baofeng is uh, kind of a terrible. 
and oh, I would say almost useless. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be scanning just through frequencies, you kind of need one of these as a thing called. They, well, they have different proprietary names. This one's Signal Stalker. Other ones have Close Call and, and similar things. And what they do is, it's almost like a uh, frequency counter, but not quite. Well, they'll scan until they find something, and it it'll often it'll zero down to like the kilohertz, and then it will save in a bank the frequency that you find, which is really nice. You can just hit the scan, and it'll just scan through and then save everything that you're receiving out of the area. I like that feature. The Balfangs are FM only and as they are UHF, VHF transceivers, that's all they need to be. There's some of the newer models are digital, which is cool, but um, most of them aren't, the cheap ones aren't. Um, scanners, you get AM, FM, digital and you can set them up for trunking systems so you have a greater capabilities there um, can't do any of that with a Balfang most scanners will come with banks pre-programmed in and these banks what they are is they'll have the frequencies such as railroads public safety ham radio and the walkie-talkie ones like FRS, MERS, GMRS, etc so if you just want to scan railroad frequencies, you press a button, it'll scan through that bank. If you want railroad and the FRS frequencies, you press buttons and it will only scan through those banks. You can select which ham radio bands you want to scan through. So there's a lot of very specific settings that you can do in the field where you, if you only want to get certain groups of frequencies, you can do that with here. None of that is possible with these. It's once it's programmed in Chirp, the only way you can change it again is to program it again with Chirp. With the scanner, you can also change what range you want to scan through if you only want to get 460 to 467. Then you can just punch in 460 to 467 for the lower and upper range, and it will only scan in that range. Um, and if there is a little group in there that you're receiving interference on, of course, you can block that one out so it'll skip over the interference so you can only receive the stuff that you are wanting to receive. Now, I don't want to say that, that you shouldn't get one of these, even if you're just wanting to, to use it as a scanner. If you have, you know, just certain things that you are wanting to use it as a scanner for, these are definitely worth the money. Then they're, they're a transceiver first and a scanner second but if you're only wanting to scan through certain amateur frequencies or certain public safety of course you need to turn the duplex off so you can't transmit on those frequencies in your chirp settings if there's only certain things that you're wanting to use it for as a scanner then the Baofeng will definitely work for that definitely get one get your amateur radio license and all that stuff because these things are pretty cool and they're definitely worth the money and they will they will be effective for limited purposes if you want more serious scanning capability then you should go with a uh, a scanner scanner one that's built for scanning you can do a lot more with them but if you only have a little bit that you want to do and are considering getting into ham radio then even if you're not get one of these anyway and hey maybe you'll end up getting the ham radio anyway because these things are pretty cool and once you learn how to how to use them then they they can be kind of fun i hope that was useful and if you're still watching subscribe to my channel bye